it's still standing up the podcast with Craig Shoemaker, special guest Tara Wombly Kuza Weber. Boom. April. What is today's date? April 9th. Here we go. Hello, Tara. The first guest I've ever had that actually flew in. Hi, Craig. I am honored. Me that, too. That you are here all the way. We're in California, not only California, but like outskirts of Los Angeles. Yes. It's like a, it's like another hour trip from the airport uh, and Westlake Village and these beautiful studios. Do you did you see the name of the studios, by the way? Yes. What's it, the name? It's Native South Studios. And how about that? So I love it. So something in the world was drawing you here. Well, Absolutely. maybe for years. It yeah. could be since Barry Crimmins. True. So we've been drawn, you know, both you and I are kind of like into that spiritual realm of yeah. there's no accidents and there's an energy sure. and there's a flow that brings people together sometimes. And here you are. Yes. It didn't matter that you are 3,000 miles away no. in Florida and here we are. It didn't matter. As a matter of fact, you say, I'm on the next flight. Yes. I love you for that. I think that is fantastic. I'm going to give you an extra five minutes. Just Thank you. Because I didn't even know where I was going, what time. I just committed to it. And then I had to go back. And But it didn't matter. I was excited. Once you throw the hat over the wall. Yeah. Now, this is called still standing up. And a lot of this is about facing things in life where you go, whoa, I'm having a little obstacle here. I'm not really sure how to manage. I'm challenged. Yeah. We help people through their challenges, and especially what you're about to discuss today, which is wonderful. We're of service to others. It's not just a podcast to make you laugh. I'm obviously a stand-up comedian. Right. I could do that. Yes, I could do that. Can. It's like, I, I see all these podcasts with comedians, and I've been on them, and it's great. I just really have an intention to go much deeper mm -hmm. and of service to others, which Barry Crimmins, our common friend, that's what he did. Yes. I was so impressed when I saw that documentary. It blew me away, obviously, to tears, to hear his story. Yes. And tell us tell us a little bit about that and how we're connected through Barry. Okay. And what Barry was about. Let's begin with that. Okay. And Sounds so great. people can sort of get the vibe on how we are here and how you got on a flight from Florida and ended up in this studio. Oh, Barry. Barry passed away in 2018. Yeah. So Cancer. It was just... Uh, Tough go, go writing this book without him because he would have definitely been a part of it. Definitely my inspiration. Uh, Barry was an advocate for sexually abused uh, boys. But before that, though, just so you know, yes. this is where I, I feel the right almost to Barry gives me the right to go other places Absolutely. with my c career and life and this podcast. He's a stand-up comedian for many years yes. and one of the top stand-up comedians in Boston. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, Bobcat Goldthwait did a documentary about him. Yes, yes. And that's where um, I – and see, I was a social worker in Cleveland when he was in Cleveland. Oh, that's how we met. No way. So the girl he was dating was in the same field as me, assisting uh, sexual assault victims. And she was an attorney, and she told me about what he was doing, and I was starting a project for – survivors of domestic violence just down the road mm. and this is 30 years ago yeah and so he was on AOL and he discovered those chat rooms which were full of pedophiles yeah and he started his own investigation and that was before that was dial up so mm -hmm. he paid for all the dial up hours and then the downloading of child pornography that he received from the pedophiles online was unbelievable. Oh, thousands. Unbelievable. Yes. Thousands. Upstanding citizens, upstanding in yes. quotes. I mean, allegedly upstanding yes. citizens, sometimes church leaders, rabbis. It's unbelievable to me yes. what this man found out. Yes. And we're always discovering these things, but it gets it gets tossed away. And that's why you're here because I don't want to toss these things away. I don't want to be uncomfortable. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Yes. I say this to everyone listening or watching. It's okay. Yeah. When you're not going to address it, that's how pedophiles exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the irony. Is you are participating in it as you cover it up. You Absolutely. don't want to talk about it. You turn your head. It's uncomfortable. I have to tell you before you move on about Barry, it just, just came up for me. Just yesterday I had a talk with my mom. I don't know oh. if it's a coincidence that you're here, but and it wasn't mentioned to her that you were coming, but. My mom, we had a big talk about the pedophile 
you know, the the guy that kidnapped me. Okay. And it was a really interesting talk because she was apologizing. She said, oh, I'm embarrassed. I don't want to talk about it. Mm. I said, Mom, it's okay. It's okay. You were great. You know, you did the best you could. Yeah. And that's the thing I want to say to anyone is you do the best you can, but the best you can is not to ignore. So I said, Mom, I'm going to be honest with you. The only problem I had, because she was saying I shouldn't have left, and mm-hmm. I thought he was a hero to you, but he was. That's what they do. Correct. That's how they get in. Yes. They're Boy Scout leaders. They're Little League coaches. They're whatever it is. That's how they get in, and they, yes. you need them. And I said, Mom, the biggest issue I had, and this is what I tell people all the time, is you told me not to tell anyone mm. when I told you. When I came back from five days in this ghetto hotel. I said, that was, it's just a mistake, though, and it's okay. Yeah. Because she carries around shame with this. Absolutely. And that's the thing is, I think that people have such shame attached to something like that. And again, this gives the pedophiles a free path. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. the power of it, yeah. is, the, is the silence yeah. and... Um, the complacency of people not responding. And, you know, your mom's response was like a lot of parents. Yeah. Because I've worked as a social worker for 32 years hearing all sorts of ways children get groomed into being sexually abused. But it her response was trauma. She was a traumatized mom hearing what you had to say. And her first reaction was... <gasps> Don't tell anybody. Why, by the way, what you're doing now is you're describing trauma is it hits your whole body. Yes. And it's, a, <gasps> it's a freeze. Yes. And that's what she did. Yeah. You freeze. You know, yeah. from your perspective, you're like, oh, my God. You know, that's what I get when I told her. Well, if you look at it from her perspective where she's just like hit a ton of bricks, you know, because and she guilt. made that choice. She made the choice of letting me yes. go and you yes. know, encouraging me because this guy's a father figure. And it was taking away from her. And she talked about this the other day. Mm. She was very open about it. She said, I turned to your sister and I said, this is great. So she talked all about that. She doesn't remember telling me to keep it a secret. Mm-hmm. And there's an old saying, you're only as sick as your secrets. And I want to encourage anyone yes. to unveil these secrets and don't be afraid. Don't yes. be afraid of people, their reactions. It's just their projection. It's their own fears. They don't want to look at something. Correct. And Barry... And you mm-hmm. are just so courageous that you are willing to get out there and fight the fight mm-hmm. and expose these people, no pun intended. Yeah. Expose them for what they are. And there's so many of them. Yes, there are. Have you seen a Sound of Freedom? No. You're kidding me. I don't think of it. What, which oh, the story? Oh, my God. a huge movie about sex trafficking. Oh. Wow. Recently? Very. The last year. Mm. That you don't know about it tells me a story of Hollywood rejected this movie, Mm -hmm. which actually did make a lot of money. And it was a story about this guy who was a real, you know, there's stories about him now that said he's this and that. Whatever he did, he was really brave. He went down to South America and really challenged this whole paradigm. It is sick what goes on with yes. the sex trafficking. It's yes. unbelievable. It's a, to a degree that's very high, but because like Hollywood runs things, the media runs things, you just don't hear about it. Yes. And that's true. why we're afraid because they make us afraid. Absolutely. That's the narrative that they pound down. Yeah, absolutely. Is absolutely. Do not mention these things. No. You'll ruin his life. You'll ruin his career. You must have done something. I still hear those yeah, cliches, yeah. you know, and it's it's really unfortunate because 30 years from when I met Barry to now, the awareness is still so desperately needed, you yeah. know, to sit here and have this conversation. Although I feel like there has been, there is a shift, yes, you know, there is. Yeah. Uh, we've saw Epstein go down. We're seeing Diddy go down, exposed. Mm, R. Kelly. R. Kelly has been exposed. And I think what's really important, um, working with some people right now who were sexually abused as children and being prosecuted is at the top of the list, you know, and I've been trying to work with them and they're finally getting it that holding someone publicly accountable for sexual abuse, whether it's a child or an adult, is so powerful Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that because 
the percentage of, you know, rapes that get reported, they're probably under 5%. Under that 5%, you got prosecuted, and then even small that are actually going to serve time. Because nothing good comes out of it, supposedly, because they come after the victims a lot of it's times. Brutal. It's just a victim shaming, that everything that goes on. It's unbelievable to me, yes. the amount. I will tell you that on the negative side of this, there are people that claim to be victims. I remember the Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. So then it goes too far, and they bastardize the whole cause. Yeah. By people that went on a bad date. And oh, I'm a victim, too. So we have a victim mentality, and we don't want to encourage the victim mentality. Take care of your stuff, whatever you can. But if you are a kid, you are truly a victim. Yes, yes. You, There's a difference. Exactly. And adults need to be able to decide on that. And, you know, do I really want to come out with this or can I manage this myself? Yeah. What did I do? What's my role in this? I'm not just a victim. A lot of times not. So we can't be mad at people for that. Here's the thing. I want you here to express these things because this is a place to have the voice when most won't even have you on. Mm -hmm. Most Very won't true. even discuss something like this. Very true. So, and I'm not even going to apologize to anyone out there that's tuning in to a comedian, a longtime comedian. Mm -hmm. This isn't stand up. This isn't my. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, well, it is comedian culture. Well, not only that, it's standing up. Yes. And, and there's an irony we're, in all of that. There right? is an irony to it. Stand yeah. up. Stand up. We stand yes. up for something, we stand up for truth. Right. You might not like the truth and people don't like the truth. Yeah. And that's why the canceling goes on. Right. Don't like the truth. They don't like to see what's behind the curtain. That's true. Don't like to see how the sausage is made. Right. This is what happens to people and they have a react, a visceral reaction to it. But it's something that they haven't healed within themselves. Absolutely. So that's what I really want to implore people. Work on your stuff. Yeah. Work on getting better. Work on your spiritual growth. Yes. And then. You can handle conversations like this and not only handle the conversation, perhaps join us in this cause. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Because there is a shift. And and like you say, you know, children dealing with the men in the story here and that I grew up with who we had a principal who was a pedophile in our elementary school mm. and he was attracted to boys. And what's his name, by the way? Jay Kellogg. Good. Jay Kellogg. I love when people name the name. My guy was Ben Rauscher. Our rec director was Joe Axford. I think that they should have their Jay names Kellogg. set out. <laughs> Jay Kellogg. And that's for you. You know who I'm talking say to. Say it loud and say it proud. Jay that's Kellogg. Exactly right. And there's nothing that can happen to you. No. Only good can come out of that because now maybe somebody was warned. Is still alive, Jay Kellogg? I don't think he is. Oh, okay. I think he was... Uh, I think from what we found out, it might have taken his own life, which is the cowardly way out. And you can't yeah. find a death certificate, that kind of thing. Mm. They're sneaky to the end, you know. Sure. And that's why I want to share a story about healing, though, which is yeah. so powerful. One of the friends of mine, classmates, um, disclosed recently. And we've been working together for the last couple of weeks. And he hit me up yesterday and he was at the school. And... He hadn't been there for 30 years. And I was, he was at the school where this took yes. place. The school, the subject of the book. Yes. The secret monster at school. Yes. And he, this guy was at that school at that time. Yesterday. Yes. No. We, yes. We Just talk to you. He said, I'm at the school. Was it eerie to walk into this place that was like, I remember when Barry, during the documentary, he would go to the places where the crimes were committed. Right. I mean, it was like, oh, my God, I had chills. I was, yeah. And it's such courage that it took to go back to the scene of the crime. It's powerful. It is powerful. And we need to do that. We need to do that to heal. I tried, yes. to, find, I tried to find the ghetto hotel that I was taken to, but I could never even come close to finding it. Really? It was, well, you're so— You're, you're young. You have, you have no yeah. bearings when you're 13. There's no yeah. phones. There was— no That's phones true. in the room. I was in, in no way to escape. But I mean, Barry did that. He went back to where the abuse took place. And you have been back to the place where the yes. abuse took place. Yes, I did. I and what happened back. when you went back? Not this person. It's more important. What did you feel when you went back? I went back the last night in town. 
uh, I don't live in Cleveland anymore. And I took my friend's truck and I set up my sage and I burned sage and I was praying and I was talking to the kids. I was... Not um, literally. No, but I was talking to all the kids that were there for 22 years, according to our research. The spirit of the Yeah, children. the children yeah. that had to endure this. And it was so, it was really symbolic. It was at night, it was raining. It was kind of, you know, depressing. But at that point, I felt like I was also there as a representative to all the other children that hasn't have not come forward. And even with knowing this is coming out and 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 the networking among my classmates um, that did or did not participate, they know. And there's still people are coming forward. I know there's a lot more because I investigated this. Mm -hmm. I interviewed my classmates and everyone had concerns about other students, you know, because he was voyeuristic, which is very unusual for a pedophile where he that's where I became a victim because I witnessed it. And um, other kids did, too. You know, other girls as well, other boys who might not have been molested. You know, there are different ways to be abused sexually, and it's not all the same. And some of us might not have ever gotten touched by him or had a problem with him. Mm. You know, there's other groups of people where I've they're like, oh, my God, we didn't even know. You know, so you just, you really never know. But the the enabling of that environment is so overwhelming to me that something like this can last for so long. Yeah. When you have eight-year-olds that know it's going on repeatedly all through the day, you know, and kids me, being dragged out of the classroom. The part that amazes me is the subtle collusion that goes on with people that turn their heads I'm amazed even the, I remember the Sandusky trial, yes. the whole thing in, at Penn State, how many people were basically assisting this to take place and they turned their heads in denial. Decades. That one lasted decades. Decades. And, and how in the world, based on someone's power or based on your denial, how in the world we can just allow this to take place? If there was like, like, can you imagine if there was like even a slight, yeah, a slight uh, idea that someone came up to me and said there might be something going on here? That's the end. I yes, mean, you're going to yes. go full on in. But not of all, not all of us do that. You would, I would. Not Barry a lot would. of courage out there. Isn't that the most one of the most disappointing things to me yes. in my life is how how few people have courage, and I include the people yes. that won't even listen to this. I agree. I include them as well. They're turning their heads. They're going, I don't want to listen to this. This is a bunch. I remember I did an interview with a, a comedian, and he's like, hey, bro, you're going to have to edit this out because I was talking about this. It's so uncomfortable for people, but if it's uncomfortable for you, just think about what the child's going through, yes. how uncomfortable it is for them. Yes, and that's a good example for people to understand yeah. the depth of abuse that you had an adult guy, you know, really uncomfortable. And that's what I say when people come at me. I, I don't, I've Interestingly enough, I've never been called a liar. Mm -hmm. I've had threats and harassment, but that's okay. I expect that. But to be able to tell the story, I feel like we need to protect the kids, not just from this happening, but when they disclose, like the kids from the Nickelodeon series is mm. that, that's coming out. Did you watch it? Yes. And I finished the last one last night, too. So Did you see it. the one with uh, Soledad O'Brien yes. interviews, the, the follow-up? Yes. Yeah, obviously it's very intriguing to me. Yeah. Because I know the patterns. I want you to describe the patterns of a pedophile because they're very consistent. I'll give you some of my versions okay. because based on myself, but I want you to go first. Okay. Some of the patterns to look for, the type. Mm -hmm. What's the what is it? What is it? if you're casting a pedophile? Yeah. Well, I like what you said. You said they need you. Yeah. So this kids are in a circumstances where the adult is in charge. It has the authority yep. and you need him for, you know, whether it's Boy Scouts or mm -hmm. it's at school. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the most important thing with one of my friends, Sue, she told me to encourage the depth that a pedophile will go to expo get exposure to children alone for a long period of time. And so if you look at a principal 
you're looking at a bachelor's degree with four years, a mm. master's with two, and then a PhD for his doctorate. Mm. Couldn't be him. So I wouldn't go to school for 15 years just because I like children. Yes, you would. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's we need. That's dedication. Yes, that's what we it's exactly. A, I, I wonder if that's his motivation. Go, it is. It's I'm going to go this next level of degree because I'm going to have some kids here. I'm going to have more exposure to kids if I get this level of degree. That's amazing. The to more me. education, the more power he has. Mm. So he was running mm. the show with the PhD. Wow. He's a principal. And he has that uh, title. Yes, yes. Once they have a title. Oof. When they're needed, but when they're titles. needed, when they're needed by parents too. Yes, that's where a little bit of denial comes in. One of the worst cases to me, where I just, you know, and I won't call him a pedophile, but I will tell you that hmm. if Michael Jackson, remember when that was going on, and there are people that have come out and, and they get angry at those people that came out in the documentary because yes. this guy made some of the greatest music ever. Yes. But I, I went logical. As a comedian, we go logical, okay? You unpack things that other people aren't unpacking. You see things that other people don't see. You know, this guy around my age, right? If I called you and said in a soft voice, I'd like your son to, uh, to sleep over my house. <laughs> I'm having a sleepover. Not your daughter, just your son. And we're gonna, I'm going to serve him Jesus juice and... And we're going to be in pajamas and sleep in the same bed. Now, I'm calling you. I'm an adult calling you to have your yeah. child, not you to sleep over, not you to hang out. Let's go smoke some cigars or whatever it is. Asking for you to allow your child to sleep in the same bed. So if anything he's guilty of, that was admit, admitted that he did that. He yeah. acted like that was an okay thing. Normal. It's not okay. Yes. And that's where parents, those parents went, oh, it's Michael Jackson. Yes. He's empowered with more than degrees. <laughs> right. The grooming, the grooming and that goes into the, the grooming and they groom and they're experts at it. Yes. They know how to get away with it. It's amazing to me. And the power that they have to protect themselves. What I'm saying to people is just look. Yes. Just look. Don't look with blinders on. Don't look with something that you need. If, if it, giving this person up if, it should be fine for you because you'll be fine in life if they, that person doesn't supply money. You'll go find money somewhere else where yeah. your kid's not involved. Right. Whatever it is, it's like a belief that you must have in yourself and higher power, source, God, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Go with that because then you're going to be guided in the right direction as opposed to compromising your own integrity, compromising yeah. your child for the goal of, well, maybe if he's with this coach, then he's going to be a better baseball player. Or whatever it is, there's some something that that person gives to you. Oh, yes. my, in my neighborhood, it was the rec director. Oh, my kid's going to have a job. Right. Those, rec, those kids that work for him, I used to be jealous, by the way. Mm -hmm. I used to be jealous of anybody that went with Joe Axford. He was the Springfield Township Commission, not commissioner, rec director. And he would have them working on trash trucks, and the trash guys made a lot of money. I'm going, I, I got to cut lawns for half mm -hmm. that amount. And thank God he didn't choose me. I know. I feel kind of bad, though. Like, well, what's wrong with me? <laughs> so, but they want you to feel that way, how too. How did Joe that's, Axford not pick me? That's you're another. You're right. You're right. That's Part another of the trick. thing is, Part too. of the trick is you set it up almost like a competition. Yes. And they pick their winners. Yes, they do. Exactly how they do it. My friend said he walked in one time and he was not picked either. Mm -hmm. and he walked in and this guy would have like a bunch of guys in this little area. And he said, he looks and he's washing a kid's hair, a 13 year old kid's mm -hmm. hair, like scrubbing it like really hard. And everybody's laughing and stuff like washing his hair. If you come home and tell your parents that, immediately the parents should go, are you kidding me? You're washing my son. What, what in the world would you be washing my son's hair for? But they get away with all of these things. They all become, it becomes normalized. And minimized. So you know, uh, minimized. things in the showers, like at Sandusky, they were yes. you know, playing the show. Oh, that's roughhousing. That's what guys do. This other pedophile at this camp in my hometown, he was doing things, you know, with nude kids, but he would act like this is what guys do. Yes. Yes. 
And it, it confuses children, too, when they have that type of, you know, if the, especially like in your situation when you didn't have a father in the home that's, and your mom that, is tr- that, is trying to, I was about to say, that's one you know, of the keys, yeah. uh, replace that male role model for yeah. you. And that is pedophile's paradise to be a needed person exactly. and fit that role. Exactly. And that's the guy, Ben Rauscher, who took me away. He, my mom had, I had no dad. And she said, whoa, this is great. Just take, yes. him, take him to the football games. Oh, this giving him everything that he needs. Yeah. And I remember, I remember the way he lured me in with gifts. That's mm-hmm. the other thing. If you're poor and you're getting gifts that Absolutely. nobody else has, you go back to school and you brag, look at this. I've got these, these yes. shorts he gave me and, yes. you know, that, that kind of stuff. So what inspired you or what gave you the courage to actually write the book? Okay, Spirit Killer. Spirit the, Killer. The Secret Monster at School is about our pedophile principal in mm-hmm. elementary school who was attracted to boys, and he sexually abused my classmates and friends. Powerful title. Yes, and as a Lakota Native American from Standing Rock, uh, spirit is strong part of our culture. Mm -hmm. And when a child's spirit is damaged, it's really the core of who we are as people in our existence. And I feel pedophilia and sexual abuse of children kills our spirits. Mm. And so there is a part of us that dies, I feel. A part of you. Yeah. And then reawakened yes. by awareness. Yes. By healing. Disclosing. And there's processes. Yes. Disclosing. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Very important that people get that message. Yes. And that's what I hope to show the seriousness of it, yeah. but also the healing side of it, because yeah. there are people in the story that are really doing the work, including myself, to get better. And that's what's important, that you can be. Uh, two years ago, I was a mess, and two years ago, right now, I'm, I mean, later, I'm just, I'm, I'm flying. This is wonderful. The secret monster at school. What, what compelled you? What drove you? What inner source was working for you that you said, "I'm gonna get this out here"? Uh well, my hero in the book is the first friend of ours that disclosed during the pandemic, and he was triggered by those Boy Scout commercials. You know, they're saying the sexual abuse compensation. And about here's our lawyers and he I didn't see that. Yeah. And so he was the TV. He said he heard it and he started having flashbacks. And so he posted on Facebook and within hours there was like 74 responses, you know, and there were kids that weren't even in the great, you know, they had come to school afterwards and they all knew about it. And then my dialogues with him because his life was a total shambles and has been devastated by what he went through. Mm -hmm. And I had the privilege of growing up with this kid and what a sweet kid and watch the demise, Mm -hmm. you know, as a second grader to, you know, ramming his head in the brick wall full speed after he's coming out, you know. And alcohol and drugs is often, often happens, yeah. Yes, and... My friend Paul had a real... He did investigations on this guy, Axford, and a lot of the guys were dead. Oh. Suicidal, yes, yes. alcoholics, drug addicts. They can't they can't reveal their shame. No. No. I, it's so weird. I don't know what it is with me. And maybe I'm I have a gift or maybe I'm blessed. Mm-hmm. It it has this guy has no power over me whatsoever. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna tell a joke right now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Let's hear it. Because we don't want to be serious the whole time. No. I mean, it, 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 that's the way life is. Life has cut texture and color. We don't go, this is a serious episode. They must remain serious the entire time with no laughter whatsoever. Barry Crimmins was such an advocate, but he was one of the funniest yes. guys around. Yes. They did a documentary smartest, on him. Smartest. It was called Mr. Lucky. Is that what the name Call was? Me Lucky. Call Me Lucky. Yes. That's what they call it's it. It's free on Tubi. So and, if and you want to watch it. It was just such a wonderful documentary directed by another comedian mm-hmm. who. People don't understand the depth of comedians. Anyway, I'll tell you a joke. Okay. I just told it yesterday. But, okay. Um, this is a dad joke. Okay. This is original. I wrote this one. Okay. okay. What <laughs> What kind of vegetable got caught in the pirate's throat? I don't know. An artichoke. <laughs> okay. 
you flew 3,000 miles. <laughs> okay, ask me you what just, my ring says. You just looked away. You looked away on that joke. It, uh, let me see what it says. I am the storm. I am the storm. And tell us the meaning of that. Well, okay. I got my work partner, Cookie, and I these rings for Christmas and our birthdays. Um, we have been working a um, child welfare case out of New Mexico, which is Indian Child Welfare Act. And um, it was oh, upheld last year. This was about the yeah. Supreme Court. Oh, and you went all the way to the Supreme Court? Well, they this, upheld it. This is the they, one who adopted legal. the child, and, and, and she happened to marry the father who was the father of the child? Or, or There's a couple different cases. Oh, okay. But our case has nothing to do with that. Our case oh, okay. is dad's ex-girlfriend took this child. That's what I'm, that's the one. I'm, yeah, yeah, and um, they won't return it. So there's 22 violations of this federal law, okay? And it's a non-native placement. Vandy Crane, Rachel Timmerman needs to give this child back. And the Bureau of Indian Affairs finally stepped in, and oh, after did. a year and a half, yes. So we. So did... sometimes uh, the sovereign nation of Native Americans, sometimes they have to step in with their own laws and and their own. Yes. Uh, in these circumstances, though, what's unfortunate, it's kind of like the Diddy circumstances where you have African Americans in the mix of all the perpetrating. Mm. Okay. And mm. so with these Indian child welfare acts, some of these ICWA, which is the acronym workers, they're native women. Mm. So, you know, they're complicit and obstructing legal rights to provide yeah. our right. people attorneys because a, a, a native American child should not be in a, in a home for the foster care system. That's not according to the law to a non-native family. Right. The and woman's this, not. The, yes. But she was the girlfriend of the of a guy who was native, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it was planned. Yeah. She groomed. Wow. You know, she came to that no dapple and oil what the movement. hell is she doing, too? Yes. Yeah. Well, she's a felon. We got, we got everything, you know, we right. uncovered who she is. Yeah. But this is just one example. Of course. It's one of millions. That's what I could not believe. Watch Sound right. of Freedom, by the way. You're yes. going to flip out when you see Sound of Freedom. This right. is like... I have heard of it, but Whoa. I think I've just been immersed in working with this case sure. and getting my book done. I did hear it. There's only so much you can take, by the way. <laughs> it's really true. You, what do you do for relief? Like I just told you a joke. I mean, what what do you do for relief from this? Because it's a it's a heavy burden that you've chosen. I love laughter. I'm funny. Good. I think I am. I, I mean, I have funny friends. My kid's funny. You know. You make sure that you surround yourself with that energy because it really yes. helps the healing that needs to take place because of what yes. you've been through. And you not only left it from what you've been through, you're now into other people, what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And just being in that toxic energy can really affect us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I implore you, I encourage you and anyone, mm -hmm. find your laughter, find your joy yes. constantly. Never take it too serious. All mm -hmm. of these issues, people go, how do you even talk about it? Because I give it the light touch because I know this guy doesn't have the key to my freedom. This guy doesn't isn't right. it's not my warden of my prison. Right. If I allow if I stayed in resentment, he would. Correct. If I stayed in blame, he would. That's I have a good to forgive. Point. Oh yeah, it's so important. And that's why I could easily talk about it. And, and again, I'm talking about it because I want other people to have the you know, yeah. the courage to do the same. You're only as sick as your secrets. Yes. Come out with the secrets. It's not about outing people. It's not about hurting them in return. No. It's about your personal freedom. First, yes. you become aware of it. Stop denying it. Then say it to whoever you need to say it to. Now, where would someone go if they wanted to expose someone, if they wanted to have them arrested or whatever, had they wanted to have it you know, investigated. Where would someone go? Is there a hotline? Well, I, w I would suggest rain.org, which oh, is right. R-A-I-N-N. -N. N-N, yeah. Yeah, dot .org. Rain.org. Tons think, of yeah. research, you know, yeah. to go to get an advocate. And I, I, I strongly rem uh, recommend that they get their advocate first. Someone like me who's going to be supportive, cares about you, knows the boundaries, doesn't go on to tolerate certain things from law enforcement and protect you. Yeah. And that's what, you know, you got to be protected from the system. And I wanted to say that I chose you to write the forward in my book because I heard you on a pod or Joe, uh, excuse me, Paul Castronova show. Oh, in Miami. Yeah. Paul and young Ron. Sure. 
Young Ron just passed away. I know. Yeah. I had a tear. I was like, really? Yeah, 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 me too. They I was, were yeah. quite the team. Right. Well, they had broken up a few years ago, and Paul's on his own, but uh, Young Ron just passed away. Yeah, they were the number one show in Miami for years. Forever. Probably, Probably still, he probably, Paul's probably still his number one. Yeah. But I said it on, I said it on terrestrial radio, and see, <laughs> that's how it works, everyone. You put it out there to the universe, and then you showed up here. Mm-hmm. Just because I said that, like yes. probably 99.9% of the people that are listening to morning radio do not want to hear anything close to this. But you said Barry's name too. Yeah. But I heard what you were saying before you said Barry, and then I was like, what? He said Barry's name. Yeah. And then years later, I remembered that. Yeah. And so I really, it was really important for me to um, have Barry's connection in this story. Yeah. And I'm so glad that I you know, heard you that one day because yeah. this is really important to the journey for other males to see someone like yourself that utilizes comedy and healing yeah. with laughter and can sit here and say, this man doesn't own me anymore. No. That's it. Yeah. It's and that's best, a great yeah. example, though, you know, and it's something for, I hope, men that are watching to strive to be because the enormous progress i have seen in these men in their 50s that have disclosed in a short time is incredible yeah, incredible yeah you know just oh my gosh just the i can breathe better you people know people talk about healing all the time yes. it's like the, well you need to heal that stuff too it's not just about a band-aid on a leper you need to get this stuff internally yes and first you become aware it's yes. like it's like uncover discover discard i mean you really got to start uncovering this stuff unpack this tell the story and you'll remember, you start to remember more details of it. Oh, it does come and, back. But be okay with that, though. Yes. Don't, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to do My mom the other day said, I don't want to talk about it. I feel terrible. Yeah. And, you know, and by the way, I'm not knocking my mom. As a matter of fact, I said, I applaud you. You know, you did a great job with me growing up. It's fantastic. I mean, you did the best you could with no support whatsoever, secretary's yeah. wage, and trying to raise two kids and. You know, and and no father, no influence like that. And that's how pedophiles prey upon those situations. Yes. Poverty, desperate. Oh, my God, look at what he's offering. I remember this guy he offered me. I was going around bragging to everybody. I said, oh, it's going to be a five-star hotel with a guy with white gloves greeting our limousine. Oh I God. remember creating that. Mm. Because when you're a kid and you're desperate, you create fantasies. Mm-hmm. And they know that. Yes, they do. And that's They're where the evil. Very much aware of, of preying upon your fantasies. You want to get out. Yes. You feel, I felt so desperate, so alone, abused, mm -hmm. not seen, not heard. And there comes a guy, yeah. sees me, hears me, involves me, takes me to games and gives me booze. And I'm blending in with all the woo people. Woo! <laughs> you know, yeah. all the woo people at the stadium. How old were you? 13. I hadn't even at puberty yet. And uh, I was a very late puberty guy. I look at my son now. He's like the same age and mm -hmm. same body type and everything. I'm going, my, wow. He's never had to deal with anything. Isn't that mind blowing? Because we're blowing. so hyper protective oh, of I our went, kids. And I went, oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, but and by the way, I'm also not. Yeah. I want him to experience right. things, I want him to be able to have the wherewithal to deal with things and challenges. And I think that's important too, because I do think we've gone too far yeah. in society with protecting kids. Yeah. Like protecting doesn't mean you put them in a bubble. Smother. No. Yeah. No. Allow them to make mistakes, allow them to fall, allow them to make them aware of people like this. Like this show maybe can make other people aware of there's your typical pedophile folks. Okay. Yes. So yes. watch out. Yes. And they're everywhere. That is the, and I want to share a quote my friend Cookie said, there are no sides in child sex abuse. abuse. No sides. No sides. Let me try to think of what that means. You know, or there's one side in sexual, you know, there's no sides. There's only one one side. Maybe. I oh, you it. mean you can't take the pedophile side yeah, and like support the pedophile? Yeah, like there's only one side. That is, that Maybe is, I said it wrong. That, no. <laughs> We said it right because you caused me to make sure that oh, okay. I, for the audience, was representing the audience saying, what did that mean? Let's make sure we don't just let that fly. Those sides, like a triangle or a square. Yeah. No, there is no. 
there is no right to what they do. Right. There's no goodness in what they do. No They're not defense. providing any service. There's no defense for what they do. It's no. amazing to me to watch the Hollywood thing. You know, how about how many people wrote letters in For, support, 41. In support of a up. guy? And I'm looking at this guy going, even like just a couple clips, I'm going, there's something not right about this guy. Yes. And yes. then all of those people, famous ones too, that was they difficult. showed their photos. Yes, they did. That was, was difficult. It was tough for you to see that the, you see, you know, Joanna Kearns and Alan Thick. Yes. You go, wow. But it also made me, I'm almost lucky that I get to see everything because I've been in Hollywood a long time, a lot of, you know, credits in Hollywood, yeah. and I've seen the whole thing operate. And I want to say it's very, very, dark hmm. and i think that's one of the reasons you didn't get to see sound of freedom because the rumor was it was christian and they mentioned god i think once or twice in it oh well, hollywood so it was highly censored hollywood would rejected it oh 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 it told too much of the truth yeah because that's what they are well, there's a lot of pedophiles in there. a lot well, of yeah. sexual abuse Harvey Weinstein, that was he was caught. These are just the ones that are caught, by the they way, and am, and it's caught. amazed how they're caught. It takes that many times that it has to be serial to be caught. Almost like they want to be caught because it's that many times, Decade, decades, decades long the abuse. Like I said, Michael Jackson, it was, and they still let this guy off the hook. Yes, yes, still go into denial. People will be angry with me for saying it. You can't be angry with me for, for me for having the observation of. I'm around his age, and if I called you and asked if your kid to sleep over, your boy to sleep over in the same bed with me and have Jesus juice and all that kind of stuff, you can't tell me that That's there's true. anything good. You can't defend that at all. No. So not, I'm not no. even calling him a pedophile. Yeah. You don't have to. It, it, just look at the, what he did that he admitted to. Very thinking, open, yeah. uh, Making it normal because mm -hmm. he's childlike and he's innocent and he's had this – child of his father and all that kind of stuff. No, it doesn't excuse any of it. No. You don't let it, your child go over to his house. And the same with all of these cases. Yes. You don't let, you don't let, uh, you know, Drake was alone with this guy constantly. And I'm not blaming the parents, but I'm blaming anyone that listens to this show. If you move forward. Yes. And then now that you're educated, now that you're aware, or watch that show about the Nickelodeon. If you're now aware and you still allow that to happen, shame on you. Yes, thank. That's great, and I would like to say thank you to Corey Feldman. He's you know, stuck in there. Oh my God! You know, and I I feel bad for him for years. Yes. He's just been, and abused, he's my age. Abused. So by I've Hollywood. watched that. You know. Oh, just awful. What's what what you know, and they make him out to look like a whack. Barbara Walters really is like, do you hear what you're saying about a whole industry? When it was years ago, and he was like, it's true. <laughs> You know, but he always stuck to his story. After this Nickelodeon. I'm surprised they never mentioned him in the, in the series, by the way. I don't yeah. think he was ever mentioned. No, and they and did show him me. afterwards, you know. Uh, the other Corey, lot. too, was abused. Yes, and the both of them. And he, what did he die of? I mean, he died very young. I think he died with, like, a combination of, like, it's pneumonia drug and drug. A couple, you know, blend it, of things. When you're covering up like that, the chances, you know, they say these child stars, a lot of them become drug addicts yes. and alcoholics. Well, let's do the math. Yes. Let's yes. do the math and say what would maybe they be covering up with drugs and alcohol. I know I went full on. Agony. I was full on alcoholic at 13. I'm glad oh, that I, I was never already, happened. I was, I was already arrested. I was, I mean, full on, full blown criminal all of these things, anything to detach from these feelings. But that's normal. Let's put that out there. That's normal, okay? It's normal. And because you don't have anyone to support you. You don't have anyone to reach right. out to. There's no recovery for you. Right. It's not offered. Right. They should probably put something in schools. Well, you know what they did here in our district? What'd they do? They built a alcoholic rehab center next to the library. So you could read. One stop getting... shop. Well, you then, go to school there, and then you know too many of the kids were going to treatment otherwise, other places. Yeah, so my because I saw right them there. Yeah. in the psych hospital where I was working, wow. I had to pretend I didn't see my classmates. You know, and yeah. so you know when I came back from college, it was up and running. You know, another reason you're here, by the way. Why? When I see Lakota Publishing, 
I have always had an affinity, an affection, a compassion, an empathy for Native Americans. Mm. And it upsets me so much how I don't want to be a judge of who had the most abuse. Yeah. When you have all these hashtags and all these trends, it never trends. Mm -mm. It just doesn't trend. You don't say hashtag hail, you know, trail of tears. Yeah. There's so we're so uneducated when it comes to that. Very. <laughs> but when I see this is why I don't like the woke, because they are choosing who's marginalized, who's right. been tortured the most. Stop Asian hate. And what color are they? I can be honest. I can be honest. Stop Asian hate. I don't really see a look. I'm not Asian. I get it. I don't see a lot of Asian hate. I've I've been around. Right. I've been around the block a few times. I don't hear people walking and going. I saw some Asians down the street, but I have certainly seen the abuse, the serial yeah. abuse, the apartheid that took place with Native Americans in this country. And it's still going on. Like these uh, yes. equa, these ICWA it's cases. Still going on. Yes. If, these children are not with their families. They're not being returned right. after closed cases. So. We still have a long way to go. You Maybe know? we should start our own hashtag. We, or a ribbon. We need yes. a ribbon or cool. a feather. We'll use a, a feather. A how about a ribbon with a feather? A ribbon with a feather. We just created that. Yes. But why not? But it's not trending because there aren't enough Native Americans with a voice mm. yeah. in Hollywood. And Hollywood's deciding all this virtue signaling, what you're supposed to be woke about and what you're not. They decide what you're woke about. That's why I'm offended with the whole woke movement. Right. They bastardized it anyway. It was originally something that had some substance to it. It was mm -hmm. more about African Americans. But no, you're just because you choose the cause doesn't make it woke. You're not. And by the way, you're True. telling me that I'm not awake because I don't. Agree I don't, with them. I don't go with your cause or wear the tag or, you know, spread the word. It's BS anyway. <laughs> they're not doing anything to help. Yes, it's true. It's, well, they're just knocking people or taking someone down if you don't yeah. do, you follow along, you know, whatever it is. You're not helping anyone. Disruption. It's I want to help people by education. Me too. And I think what we did here today is brilliant. It just is a really great start, especially for men and boys. Yeah. It's always kind of, you know, uh, second. Of course it is. You know, but. Well, we're also, we're also supposed to be powerful. We're supposed to have the answers. We're supposed mm -hmm. to be in control. We're supposed to be the dominant species. We're supposed to be strong. You know what it boils down to, to make a little bit of fun? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's a, look, somebody goes, it's a very dark episode. It's yeah. really not because we're, it's light. Yeah, we, it's not bad at all. No, I we're don't treating think. it with, with um, lightness, with solution. Yes. With spirit. Mm -hmm. It boils down to my favorite movie is Wizard of Oz. Mm. And a man is supposed to be the lion. Mm -hmm. And remember, there's that scene goes, if I were king of the forest. Yes. <laughs> not queen, not duke, not prince. He says, egomaniac, my regal robes of the forest. <laughs> Satin, not cotton, not chintz. <laughs> Do you realize the satin, the chintz, and all that stuff? Command needs to think Fisher fell but with a wolf and a wolf and a royal growl. Oh my God. That guy, he even does the affectation of the limp wrists. Mm. He does that in the movie. He's gay. Right. And he's in the closet. Okay. And that's what that movie's about. He's supposed to be the king of the forest, but underneath he literally goes, I'm just a dandelion. Oh, he does say that. Yes, he does. I'm oh. just a dandelion. He, he even says it like that <laughs> yes, with his affectation. Back then you could get away with it. Oh. Right now I probably can't get away with even saying it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying because that's my experience. I watch that and I go, oh, this guy's covering because he's supposed to be a man. And oh. I'm supposed to be a man. And a man can handle that kind of stuff. A man doesn't have emotions. A man can't cry. A man can't talk about these vulnerable moments. A man stands up, and you go back and you beat that guy up who did that. Yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> that is a great way to end this because it made me laugh. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> made us all laugh. It's good because we need to laugh, and I just love healing with laughter. It's just a Thank beautiful you. thing. Thank you. I performed Laughter Heals 20 years ago, I believe it was, and I so believe in the healing powers of laughter. Yes, you talk about this stuff. You get mm -hmm. down to the darkness. You get down to the dirty. You, it's okay. Yeah. Give your permission to go there. Give your permission to other people going there and just really revealing these things. And the revealing is healing. Yes. That's it how it works. Yes. Public and I appreciate you coming here 3,000 miles. You flew Thank in you. just for my little podcast. Thank I'm you. I'm honored that you would. Thank you. I love that it's Lakota Publishing that they yes. can get your book, The Secret Monster at the School. Yeah. I mean, there's a monster there, and you're going to show the, the monster. But here's the thing. We're not paralyzed by the monster. No. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. That's exactly right. Yes. So that's where they can be addressed. Don't let them live inside of you. That's the whole key. Yes. Yes. Great message. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, where can we find you and where can we find your book? Uh, my book is on Amazon and it's in paperback and ebook. E and I will be releasing an audible soon okay. and a workbook. Right. For you men. Can, you can use this for your Audible. Oh, okay. Yes, that's <laughs> just, right. Just play the recording of this. That's Spread great. the word. Everyone spread the word. Oh, we have a gift for you, by the way. Okay. Do you like nutrition? Sure. Yes. I know. I know on the reservation, they don't have a lot of nutrition. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> they left you with nothing, these gonna people. They're going to cut these out. They didn't give you water. They didn't give uh, no natural resources. They stuck you on reservations. You're not wrong. I am no, I'm not wrong. Yeah. So take my little joke. and. Okay. It's true. You guys don't have a lot of nutrition. <laughs> Biotech, this stuff's awesome. Okay? okay. They have a lot of different nutrients, nutrients, and it's all natural. And it really is good, by the way. Great. I want you to get okay. back to me here. Take this bottle. Oh, okay? thank this you. This one's called Before You Game. If you're ever going to play a game, I don't talk, I'm not talking about Scrabble. Okay. Talking about if you're ever going to play some basketball or whatever it is. Oh, like for energy? Yeah, it's Before for you energy. Work oh, oh, it's okay. this great stuff. Yeah. That's wonderful. And okay. they're our sponsor. Viotech, that's with a Y. You guys can look it up. Oh, okay. Anyway, how do we look you up? Um, Tell us. LakotaPublishing.com. La Lakota. Yeah, with an H. Yes, Lakota. Yes, Lakota. I didn't. I never told you this. I am actually an ordained minister. What? In First Nation, yeah. Huh? Yeah, First Nation, yeah. How does that work? Native American. I can marry people. Oh, you can. I can officiate weddings, but oh. it's from First Nation. Oh, how did that happen? Native Americans. I don't know. They looked into my background or something, and all of a sudden, I'm an ordained minister. <laughs> I have a I have a placard that I can use to park places. Like, oh. like there's an emergency, <laughs> <laughs> an emergency, emergency wedding. Oh my god! Emergency gosh. last rites. I don't know what it's for. I've I've tried it, and it, I still get tickets. That's it's, funny. It's, it says minister and everything I thought else. You were Jewish? No, I'm not Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I was raised. Right. I was raised with the, the. We had Passover and Easter the same week. Me too. You know, it was the empty chair for Elijah or Uncle Ray today. I was very confused. <laughs> yes, but no. Anyway, such a pleasure having you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm, I'm honored that you came all this way. And Thanks, how do we Greg. find you though? I mean, it's uh, don't you have an Instagram? Call uh, yeah, Instagram, Instagram, Lakota Publishing. That's it. Yes, you're you are Lakota Publishing. Yes. Okay, yes, don't go I by am. your name, which is nine thousand names. Yes. Tara Wombley Kuza, whoever. Yes. Thank you for being here. Hey, make sure you spread the word about us. Okay, we have other shows that are aren't as dark. We have other shows that are darker. We have shows that are light. We have shows that give you information that maybe you might need. So pass the word around. It's called Still Standing Up, and uh, we'll check you out next time. Thank you. Yeah.